This is the second video in a series about the Golden Gate cloning DNA assembly method. In the previous video, we talked about how type 2S restriction enzymes cut outside of their recognition sequence. In this video, we'll learn how the Golden Gate cloning method, published by Engler et al. in 2008, exploits the characteristics of type 2S restriction enzymes to allow one-pot, one-step assembly of multiple parts. First we'll tackle the one-pot part of the reaction and show how the digestion and ligation can be done in the same tube. In this example, we are going to scarlessly clone a fragment of a gene, shown in blue, from the blue plasmid at the top, the backbone of which confers resistance to canamycin in bacteria, into another plasmid in which part of the same gene is cloned. The backbone of the recipient plasmid confers resistance to carbenicillin in bacteria. The gene fragment that we are interested in is flanked by BSA1 recognition sites, GGT, CTC, in opposing directions. It cuts one base pair downstream of its recognition site, producing four base pair 5' prime overhangs. The plasmid that we want to clone into also contains a pair of BSA1 sites in opposing directions. Between these sites is a LAC-Z cassette, meaning that bacteria carrying this sequence will be blue if the media contains XGAL. The BSA1 enzyme will release our gene of interest from the blue plasmid and will also release the LAC-Z cassette from the red plasmid, producing compatible sticky ends. When the fragment from the blue plasmid ligates into the destination plasmid, the complete desired sequence is constructed free from any BSA1 recognition sequences and therefore cannot be recut with this enzyme. Because of this, both plasmids, the BSA1 enzyme and the ligase can be added to the tube at the same time. The protocol for this reaction looks like this. In a single tube, the blue plasmid containing the fragment we want to clone and the red plasmid that we want to clone into are mixed together with the type 2S restriction enzyme BSA1, which will cut both plasmids, and T4 to ligate the complementary overhangs together. The reaction is performed in a buffer that contains ATP, which is required for the T4 ligase. BSA1 cuts optimally at 50 degrees, but as this temperature inactivates T4 ligase, we compromise and incubate at 40 degrees C for 10 minutes to allow the BSA1 enzyme to cut. We then reduce the temperature to 16 degrees to allow the T4 ligase to stick the compatible ends produced by the enzyme together. Because our final plasmid does not contain any BSA1 sites, we can repeat this cycle twice to ensure that any plasmid that was not cut the first time has another chance. This makes the cloning reaction very efficient. A final digestion at 50 degrees linearizes any remaining plasmid and an inactivation step at 80 degrees prevents re-ligation. The reaction mix is transformed into competent cells and plated on media containing carbenicillin and XGAL for blue-white selection. The next day we look at our colonies. The canamycin resistant plasmid that we released our fragment from will not be maintained on the carbenicillin plates, so none of the colonies will harbour this plasmid. The blue colonies contain the destination plasmid that was not cut or that self-ligated. There are very few of these because the reaction is highly efficient. The white colonies will harbour plasmids with our gene of interest cloned into the carbenicillin resistant backbone. Now we'll tackle the one step part of the reaction and learn how the Golden Gate cloning method can be used to assemble multiple fragments in the same vector in a one pot, one step digestion ligation reaction. As an example, we are going to show how to assemble a promoter shown in green, a coding sequence shown in blue, and a terminator shown in brown into a single plasmid. Each part is currently cloned in a spectinomycin resistant plasmid backbone. We are going to assemble them in the correct order into a carbenicillin resistant plasmid shown in red. As before, all the sequences to be cloned are flanked by pairs of BSA1 recognition sites, GGT, CTC, in opposing directions. The plasmid we want to clone into also contains a pair of BSA1 recognition sites in opposing directions, flanking a LAC-Z cassette. As shown before, 
BSA1 cuts one base pair downstream of its recognition site, producing four base pair 5' overhangs. Each fragment has a unique set of overhangs. These overhangs define the order of assembly. Each end is complementary to the end of the fragment that it will be adjacent to in the final assembly. The ligase will join the complementary overhangs, assembling the fragments into the accepting vector in the desired order – promoter, coding sequence and terminator. The protocol for the multiple fragment cloning reaction looks very much like the single fragment reaction. In a single tube, the three plasmids containing the fragments that we want to clone and the plasmid that we want to clone into are mixed together with the type 2S restriction enzyme BSA1. T4 ligase is also added to ligate the complementary overhangs together. The reaction mix is cycled through the same temperatures to allow digestion followed by ligation and then used to transform competent cells which are plated on media containing carbenicillin and XGAL for blue-white selection. Carbenicillin-resistant white colonies are likely to contain the assembly of interest. As we saw in the first video, the four base pair overhangs produced by type 2S restriction enzymes can be of any identity. It is therefore possible, as we saw in the first example in this video, to make a completely seamless assembly. However, genetic grammar has been broken down into standard parts such as promoters, untranslated regions and coding sequences, and a specific set of overhangs have been applied to each type of standard part. These overhangs have been agreed between several laboratories to allow sequences to be freely exchanged, leading to the creation, publication and sharing of a large collection of standard modular parts with compatible overhangs. These standard parts and overhangs are part of the Golden Gate Modular Cloning, or MOCLO, assembly standard, which is fully described in the third video.